So Tim Poole, who is making a career out of calling for civil war, basically. Every other video is, oh, the civil war's coming, 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 the civil war's coming. Well, yesterday, a bunch of Trump loonies broke into the Capitol building in an act of, I don't know what you want to call it, sedition, uh, 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 with some other words that I'm blanking on at the moment. Whatever you want to, I have it in the title of this video. Hold on. <laughs> Why am I blanking on words now? Insurrection. That's the word I'm trying to think of. Whatever you want to call it. Terrorism, whatever. I'm curious how Tim is going to take this because you reap what you sow. He's been sowing, uh, this sort of violent civil war, violent solves problems rhetoric. For quite a while, curious how he feels now that it's time to reap what he sowed. By the way, there's something I wanted to show you on, on Twitter. I think I retweeted it so that I'd be able to find it easily. It was basically Tim Pool. Oh, I gotta get through all these <laughs> tweets. There we go. Here it is. Kind of going. The left is kind of going crazy. <laughs> The left has become psychotic and it truly terrifies me. It's embarrassing. The left has gone insane or it's been taken over by complete psychopaths. And it's and it really does terrify me today. Let's have Let's try try my combat. Combat. The Democrats have gone off the rails. Absolutely, in my opinion. This should be enough data to show you it's the Democrats going crazy. Now, I think Republicans gotta rein it in a little bit for sure, but the Democrats have lost it. Yeah! Thank you, President Trump! What's happening to people to precipitate this kind of complete psychosis that is affecting the left? One woman has been shot. And I'm going to make the bold statement that the left is trapped in a par paranoid delusional state. And I've got evidence to back this up. They're in an anger-induced, paranoid, delusional state. Uh, staff and members in the Capitol are, are being evacuated. Paranoid delusions come from the left. We had an election that was stolen from us. It was a landslide election. I can prove to you it's the left that's become a, a, a cult. Who here is up to the task of not wearing a mask? Jesus is king and it's time to let freedom ring. My, my ideological vision of a world is very left-wing. But these people are nuts. What happens when moderate leftist Tim Poole calls out the insanity that is that is infecting the Democrats? Moderate USA! leftist USA! America! The left is fractured completely. I'm evidence of it, right? So is Dave Rubin. We will never give up. We will never concede. It doesn't happen. Our country has had enough, and that's what this is all about. Well. It's the end. The Democrats are going to go insane. Yeah! <laughs> Beautiful. Good job on that one, Vadim. So let's see how Tim Pool feels after yesterday. Ladies and gentlemen, massive breaking news. Reports that the Capitol... This is actually during it, I think. I think he posted this while it was happening. Tunda has been tear gassed right. as Capitalist Trump supporters have breached the building and are making their ways to the main chamber. Chuck Grassley and Mike Pence have been ushered out to a secure location. The joint session has been recessed. Evacuations are underway. Cue Ron Paul, it's happening meme. I didn't think it. I didn't think it. I mean, I thought Trump supporters would show up, but uh, I was wrong. I, I didn't think this would happen. It started when news reports came that Trump supporters breached four layers of outside security. Many didn't know if they were going to continue on and make their way into the building. We then saw video emerge of Trump supporters bashing out the windows of the Capitol building. They've made their way in. Some men have fire, extinguish fire extinguishers and are dispersing them, creating smoke screens so the police can't see. They're making their way in. Several people on the left and even some Republicans are calling this a coup attempt. Donald Trump tweeted out that Mike Pence didn't have the courage. I would call it more, again, insurrection or something, because I'm pretty sure a coup requires military support. Although, military coup, I don't know. I don't know the specific definition, but... Mm. Courage, something to that effect. I'll go through these tweets, but many people are saying right. Trump is Capitalist not disavowing this. Mike Pence issued a statement saying he will not return fraudulent electors because he doesn't have the power, thus saying he will not be supporting the president in his effort. 
We were in the midst of hearing from senators and, and members of Congress about their objections and their oppositions to the objection. When they announced that the Trump supporters breached the building, here's, here's a tweet from Matt Fuller. They've just dispersed tear gas in the rotunda and are telling members to put on gas masks under their seats. Over under, does Tim Pool have a big old chubby below the camera line? Because he sounds so excited <laughs> about this turn of events. My friends, over the past couple of hours, I've been looking at this story and trying to compile a, 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 a what, what's been happening. They gave out bags with gas masks to members of Congress. This is the escalation. Where we go from here, I have no idea. It could be that Trump supporters take the Capitol building, they shut down the Electoral College vote, and we enter a constitutional crisis. <laughs> no, no, Tim. It delayed them for a little bit. But they basically went into the Capitol building and then they were like, what do we do now? We, we, took the, we took the position. Isn't the game over level over screen supposed to come up? Oh, in real life, you actually need to do more than just get into a place for you to succeed? Shit. All right, let's go. And then they got pushed back by the police over time. It could be that, uh, okay, I got to slow down. The National Card Guard is being requested. They're in D.C. They may shut this down, but there is not enough law enforcement or National Guard to deal with the tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of people who are there. Yet they did. Funny how that worked. We've seen photos and videos that appears to be mid to high 10,000s, maybe 50 to 90,000 or so. I'm not entirely sure. Some have reported over 100,000. I don't think it was over 100,000. There were a decent number of people there. It was in the tens of thousands or at least 10,000. I don't know. But like at the actual capital itself, it wasn't. Especially as things went on, it dispersed as people sort of realized, oh shit, we committed a bunch of felonies. We should probably get out of here. Of those people, many of them will not fight. There's a lot of older uh, men and women who are probably not going to be involved. And a lot of people who didn't come there expecting to get into a clash to take the capital. But if several thousand remain uh, and they're not going to back down, it's going to be very difficult to regain control. Tim is talking about this legitimately like he's excited it is happening and that he hopes that <laughs> they overthrow the government. Like, this isn't how you talk about this turn of events. If you, if you think it's bad that they are basically attempting a coup on the government. This isn't how you talk about it. This is how you talk about it if you're excited at the possibility that the democratic government of the United States might get overthrown. He's like, ah, oh, he's so excited. This could result in a violent clampdown of military authority or martial law, something to that effect, which results in a harder lockdown nationwide. Or it could result in Trump supporters somehow taking power and Donald Trump <laughs> remaining president. <laughs> Look, guys, I had a lot of thoughts yesterday. I was concerned about like the safety of people in the building, especially when it first happened, because we didn't know if they were able to get like the senators and the Congress people or the senators and the House members out in time. Um, there, of course, are just, you know, people who work at the Capitol building. I was concerned for their safety, but at zero point throughout the day did I go, Oh no, they're going to effectively take over the government of the United States. How? How would they do that? <laughs> There's no way a bunch of jackasses in Trump memorabilia are going to walk into the Capitol building and just take it over. That's not how anything works. I'm not confident in that. I believe that's slim to none. I still believe, after all of this, Biden will be president. I believe the most likely outcome to everything I'm telling you right now is that Biden will be emboldened to clamp down, lock down, and enforce martial law. From this, we may actually get legit insurrection act. Jake, uh, uh, you've got Jake Tapper saying, you know, this is being incited by Trump and it's stochastic terrorism. You've got Democrats saying this is insurrection, it's rebellion. And you've got a Republican saying it's a coup attempt. Perfect grounds to, to invoke the Insurrection Act. The only issue, Donald Trump is currently the president. Let's not waste any time. I want to show you what's going on. As per usual, before we get started, head over to TimCast.com slash donate. If you'd like to support my work, there are many ways you can give. Please consider sharing this video to let people know what is going on. And I will show you 
a series of photos, some video clips, tweets, and news updates as to what is happening in the Capitol. By the time you're watching this video, there are probably way more updates. We will be live tonight at youtube.com slash Timcast IRL 8 p.m. going over the latest videos and developments on what is happening right now. But my friends, please let everyone know Trump supporters have breached the U.S. Capitol building. The rotunda has been tear gassed. According to several reports, there are videos coming from inside the Capitol. I didn't think it. I am, I am shocked, to say the least. So I have this tweet. Adam Kinzinger, a Republican from Illinois, says this is a coup attempt. What main critics are saying about this is that because Donald Trump has not called on his supporters to stop, in fact, he called for them to be here, they are saying that is stochastic terrorism. Yeah, because it is. What that means is that Trump knew, that they're implying, Trump knew that by calling for his supporters to go to D.C., they would do this. No shit. Everyone knew this was going to happen who was paying any sort of attention, especially to places like Tim Pool, if they were paying, paying attention to places like the Donald.win or paying attention to what's going on on Parler. They had talked about doing this for weeks, for weeks. And, they, and, they, and that would shut down the joint session. The joint session of Congress taking place, that was taking place, was supposed to count the votes to certify Joe Biden as the winner. There were calls to suspend this while court cases are currently pending. With the, with the latest security breach, Pence, who is presiding as president of the Senate, has been ushered out. I guess they thought 60 failed court cases wasn't enough. Maybe they need to get up into the three digits of failed court cases before they think it's okay to proceed with the normal everyday <laughs> election procedures. Removed, the session has been put in recess, and Chuck Grassley, who would preside in his stead, has also been removed and brought to a secure location. The session has been brought to recess. It is not happening. I don't know uh, when something like this has happened before, but I don't know where we go from here other than we have a constitutional crisis. It could be resolved tonight. For all we know, the National Guard comes in, clears everything out. Congress comes back, certified Joe Biden's win. That's right, capitalistic Which propaganda. is exactly what happened. Or maybe these Trump supporters don't leave. In fact, with what's going on, I can only imagine more Trump supporters will be flocking full speed to D.C., Tim, Tim, how does he still have a channel? <laughs> He's basically rallying the troops, so to speak. This is it. And it's true for Antifa as well. Many people don't believe that there will be the political willpower. Like I said over and over again, I did not think the Trump supporters would do anything like this. I thought it would be flag waving and cheering and calls for another chance in the next election. I said previously, just earlier today, I thought that it was going to be you know, uh, uh, 2022, the Republicans come back and we get a rebound in the House. This is different. People who are seeing this, and this is and this is my fear, people who are witnessing that Trump supporters have made the moves, have probably already gotten in their cars and are driving full speed towards D.C. Trump supporters and Antifa alike. From WRC BTV, protesters at U Antifa. U.S. Capitol force both the Senate and the House to recess during certification of the Electoral College votes. More than a dozen Senate Republicans and over 100 GOP House members plan to oppose the certification. We have this from The Hill. Capitol placed on lockdown. Buildings evacuated amid protests. Reports are coming in that objects appearing to be pipe bombs have been found. Now, the all clear has been reported by several people, but this is a developing story. So please stay safe. They are ordering shelter in place. Let's start going through some of these tweets. I got to just we're just going to go through them. We're going to go through them. Jake Tapper tweeted House GOP staffer tells me private residences on Capitol Hill are now being evacuated by Capitol Police. This as of 146 p.m private residents in the Capitol being evacuated. Jake Gibson tweets, multiple suspicious packages have been found near the Capitol grounds. According to multiple law enforcement officials, at least one of these devices resembled a pipe bomb. According to an official who saw the device, it is not clear yet if these are actually explosive devices. Lauren Pakoff, who is a, a MSNBC executive producer, tweets, just in from Pete Williams, a member of the U.S. Senate tells NBC News, Vice President Pence and Senator Grassley, the president pro temp, uh, temp have, been have been taken to a secure location. 
The doors of the Senate have been closed and locked, and senators have been told to stay away from the doors. Take a look at this video. I now bring you Trump supporters on the balcony breaching the Capitol grounds. And this is just the beginning. This is more. This is a video coming from, it appears to be MSNBC. Jackie Heinrich, who is a Fox News national. I'm actually legitimately shocked and off put by the way Tim is talking about this. I didn't watch this video prior to, you know, doing this. I thought he would, would at least have the decency to pretend that like, he was like, oh no guys, a bunch of Trump supporters broke into the the Capitol building. Oh no. I thought he'd at least like feign some sort of, you know, and not, not literally just be like, this is happening. People are going to get in their cars. This is just the beginning. Like this is fucking sick. Well, correspondent tweets, shelter in place now at Longworth Rayburn buildings due to police activity per message sent by the U.S. Capitol Police. There's Protesters have torn down a barrier. Fireworks are going off outside the Capitol. People in a tower telling the crowd to press forward, move forward, and we can beat them. Throwing things uh, at police, crowd pushing up, chanting USA, this is unreal. This tweet from Andrew Egger of the Dispatch. There have been reports that tear gas has been deployed outside the grounds, my friends. There have been reports that they have tear gassed inside the rotunda. This is, this is historical. This is absolutely insane. Jessica, Jessica Valenti, a noted feminist writer, says, never thought I'd see an attempted coup attempt, but here we are. Jasmine Uloa, she is for a writer for the Boston Globe, shows this video where you can see Trump supporters have breached the Capitol. There they are walking in the building. And there's more. Take a look at this photo from the Washingtonian. What you are seeing is people using barricades as ladders to then scale the walls outside the Capitol to get onto the Capitol grounds. I kid you not, Trump- The irony of Trump supporters climbing a wall to try and overthrow democracy is just too much. It's just too much. Trump supporters are scaling. The writing this season is so sloppy and on the nose. Building a wall to breach the Capitol grounds. We have this tweet here from David Hines. He says, here's something even crazier. The odds are almost 100% that they are doing this without jail support or a bail fund. And he's <laughs> tweeting in response to Elijah Schaefer. We had Elijah on the show just the other day. He says, breaking. Trump supporters have breached the Capitol building, tearing down four layers of security fencing and are attempting to occupy the building. So since then, we have seen them actually make it inside the building. For those that aren't familiar, the leftists and Antifa are typically emboldened by the fact that they have groups like the National Lawyers Guild and the ACLU who have prepared defense for them. And when they get arrested, they get bail and legal support. Numerous organizations collect donations to bail people out. These Trump supporters that are here doing this, they have, I, I doubt they have any organizational understanding. There's nothing funny. You're about true on that front. <laughs> they have no organizational understanding. Saying that they have no plan going into this, I, I think you're trying to frame it as like, ooh, they're so brave. They have no, no plans for if they get arrested. Capitalism. When really, they're just stupid. They're just stupid. On top of that, yes, people like Kyle Rittenhouse, they get donations and they get their bail paid for. If these people end up getting caught, the FBI has asked for information if anyone has any on people who were in the building. Um, Nick Fuentes was one of them. I know that for a fact. He took pictures in Nancy Pelosi's office. Um, either way, uh, it is just stupid. They're being stupid, not brave. Fine line, but they are firmly on the side of stupidity here and not brave of what's to come. There is something interesting in all of this, though. This is federal grounds. These people are storming a federal building. Any and all charges will be federal. And that means Donald Trump does have pardon power. Now, I don't know if that, that plays a role in this, but it's just something to consider. Trump would need their names and be able to, to, to in order to issue these pardons in the next couple of weeks. It's hard to know who these people are and what their names are. They're wearing masks and the investigations into these individuals because they you can't see their faces. They are not they are not prepared or organized the way Antifa is. 
It- <laughs> Antifa is the opposite of organized. It's just random people who are anti-fascist. It is likely that in the coming months, they will start arresting people, people involved in organizing, people involved- Honestly, I hope they do, but I have a feeling that almost nothing's gonna get done. It's gonna be super disappointing. Involved in- Even people like Nick Fuentes, who we literally have photographic evidence of on his own, like, Twitter and stuff. Nothing will happen. Supporting this- I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. And it's going to get absolutely crazy. Jake Tapper says stochastic terrorism. Trump, his Hill allies, and MAGA media lie about the election, and violence follows. I mentioned this earlier, but now uh, I bring it up because I want to point out it doesn't matter. It doesn't. Whether or not Jake T- Tapper says good or bad, yes or no, right or wrong, is irrelevant. Trump supporters don't believe him, they don't believe the media. And my friends, I, I warned years ago that the street battles we saw on the ground would make their way to the highest levels of government. And I was here, not just with the president, but with uh, his supporters breaching the grounds. When Jake Tapper says that this is stochastic terrorism, that Trump is, is, is and lying and, and the violence follows, it's meaningless to a Trump supporter. Fuck Trump supporters then. I don't care. <laughs> It is what it is. A fact is a fact, whether you accept it or not. I am so sick of the right's propensity to just deny reality and think that's a legitimate way to live your life. To think, I can just ignore all facts and develop my own alternate reality that I live in and that's fine and that's equally valid to someone who actually tries to understand the truth of the world in which we live. F these people. How ridiculous are these people that they think they can just be like, well, I just don't, I'm not going to listen to you. Mm. The truth is the media lies. You have fringe right-wing outlets that write fake news. You have diehard Trump supporters who are conspiracy theorists and believe in correct things. I believe the overwhelming majority of Trump supporters, probably the ones who aren't storming the building, understand what's going on with media lies and the corruption of our institutions. But not enough. They don't believe enough crazy stuff to actually storm a building. Funny about the tools of Perhaps this was Lynn Wood's real intent. Lynn Wood has been tweet- is a Trump lawyer, and he's been tweeting very crazy things for some time, and I've heavily criticized him. But he's not been ratioed. Ratioing is when you get more replies than retweets, meaning most people have something to say and don't consider sharing what you've, what you've written. Lynn Wood has called for the arrest of Mike Pence, calling him a traitor, treason, saying Chief Justice Roberts should be arrested as well. These are unhinged tweets. But when he starts tweeting things, making these accusations, the more diehard zealous of Trump's base are enraged. Again, you're literally describing stochastic terrorism. You're describing the thing that you're saying Trump supporters aren't going to believe is happening. And Lynn Wood is not, not directly calling for anything. And I wouldn't imply that. I think you have to be explicit in your calls for, for violence. But saying that the dog whistles don't exist. You literally have to say, go do this thing. Otherwise, it doesn't count. Brilliant. President sh- or the vice president should be arrested on charges of treason. Do you know what the penalty for treason is? I believe it's death. Treason wouldn't apply. Treason involves wartime stuff. This wouldn't be treason. So these are very bold statements. Now you're going to see the most ardent of Trump supporters, not the average Trump supporter, storming into the building and more violence. Currently, many prominent conservatives are saying, stop, don't do this. This is not how we handle this. Steve Scalise, for instance, Dana Lash, many other prominent conservatives are saying it's a big mistake. They're doing it anyway. I believe these people will find themselves in prison. We have more I want to show you. Anna Timmer tweets, they just put up a cross in front of the Capitol building. In this video, you can see that several men have mounted a giant Christian cross. I believe that was the accurate way to uh, freight. This was in uh, Michigan's capital, not D.C. capital. Um, this was in uh, front of the Lansing Capitol building. Is it? And they've mounted it to a base on the Capitol grounds in front of the Capitol building right there. These are people who are fighting for what they believe is being destroyed. Whether, <laughs> whether you like them or not, whether they're right or wrong, they are coming here to assert what they want. In one tweet from Julio Rosas, he says, 
Capitol Police are using flashbangs to try to get the Trump crowd to disperse. This was before, of course, uh, uh, everyone actually started making their way into the building. Burgess Everett on Twitter, he is a Politico co-congressional bureau chief, says audio message plays in Capitol buildings. Stay away from windows and doors. Kind of unsettling. And in a tweet from Timothy Burke, we can see multiple officers are being carried away after being injured. My friends, I'm shocked. I am absolutely shocked going through this. And as, as I'm recording this, my concern is that there's so much more happening. By the time you watch this video, this video is out of date. We will probably end up going live early at, over at youtube.com slash Timcast IRL. I had been saying that I plan to go down to DC, but did What's this? Someone said they were throwing someone under the bus. Wow, this is short. I am here to deliver this message on behalf of the entire White House. Let me be clear. The violence we saw yesterday at our nation's capital was appalling, reprehensible, and antithetical to the American way. We condemn it, the president and this administration, in the strongest possible terms. It is unacceptable, and those that broke the law should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. I stood here at this podium the day after a historic church burned amid violent riots, and I said this, the First Amendment guarantees the right of the people to peaceably assemble. What we saw last night in Washington and across the country was not that, end quote. Make no mistake, what we saw yesterday afternoon in the halls of our Capitol likewise was not that. We grieve for the loss of life and those injured, and we hold them in our prayers and close to our hearts at this time. We thank our valiant law enforcement officers who are true American heroes. What we saw yesterday was a group of violent rioters undermining the legitimate First Amendment rights of the many thousands who came to peacefully have their voices heard in our nation's capital. Those who violently besieged our capital are the opposite of everything this administration stands for. <laughs> I wonder how the idiots who stormed the Capitol feel after seeing this. I hope they see it That's right. and see that Daddy Trump isn't backing up their bullshit. The core value of our administration is the idea that all citizens have the right to live in safety, peace, and freedom. Those who are working in this building are working to ensure an orderly transition of power. Now it is time for America to unite to come together. I wonder if Trump tried to argue against this statement being put out because I guarantee he doesn't give a shit. I'm sure he was completely fine with those people busting into the Capitol building for him. He's a narcissist. They were on his side, so he likes them. He said, I love you in the, in the video he did yesterday before Twitter removed it. To reject the violence that we have seen, we are one American people under God. Thank you very much. Ridiculous. Didn't know if, uh, you know, what, the, what, what we would end up being able to actually accomplish. I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, we probably won't, uh, won't be making it for obvious reasons. But more importantly, I mentioned earlier, there are COVID restrictions. That means we could show up and then I can't even get live and can't even get the show and cover what's going on and tell you what's happening. Oh, is he explaining why he's not going to go to D.C.? <laughs> I trust me, guys. It's not because I'm a coward. I just, I, I can't go COVID, even though I've been downplaying COVID and saying it's not a big deal and that restrictions are stupid. Uh, I just can't go because COVID, you know? Hmm. Individuals, because of this, won't be able to get through security perimeters, nor uh, because of the lockdowns in security and COVID, will they be able to even get to the building to do the show? It probably makes very little sense for us to, to, to get down at this point. But most importantly, the safety of the people who work with me is paramount. I'd be more than willing to risk my own safety and security, but we have several other people involved in the show. And <laughs> then I just go yourself, Tim. I saw plenty of people. We were watching their streams yesterday who just had the phone and themselves and they were reporting from the Capitol.
Why can't you do that, Tim? Can't tell them to come down and enter a dangerous situation like this. It just doesn't seem reasonable. It doesn't seem feasible. So I'm going to be watching. I'm going to I'm going to incite all of you to go and commit felonies, federal felonies and break into the Capitol building. But then I'm going to I'm going to stay at home and just talk about it. <laughs> oh, what a grift. What a grift. Nonstop. We're going to be tracking the news and I am going to uh, have the show prob pro probably early live youtube.com slash timcast but let's 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 talk a little bit about this i want to read you just some from the wrcb tv story i wanted to get through as much as possible of what was happening show you here and then i want to talk about what mike pence has said and give you the official statement from pence as to why this may have all started wrcb tv says protesters have entered the capitol uh, both chambers and they've mounted on the steps uh, OK, so I, I don't need to go through this. I think the, the, the title is the title. This is the big news from this morning from uh, I'm, I'm sorry, from this afternoon at 1 p.m. Initially, I was planning on doing a segment. I thought we were I was going to be watching C-SPAN all day as they had their objections. And then Mike Pence says Biden's the winner. And that's my prediction. Isn't it amazing how wrong I've been? I <laughs> it's not that amazing after your track record, but I'm glad you're getting a little self-awareness. That's nice. I, 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 I was saying for a long time I thought the Democrats would win and then changed because I saw the polls. Said, I think the Republicans are going to win Georgia. Wrong. Then I said it's going to be a boring uh, approval and certification by, by Pence. Wrong. And there it is. Wrong, wrong, wrong. I tell you, my friends, I'm wrong a lot. I am not pretending to be a psychic. I can read you the news, give you my opinions, but I'll tell you what I was right about. The escalation. And the people who are tired of this, whose lives have been destroyed by the lockdowns, the unconstitutional edict taking away their right to worship. No surprise. They it's not unconstitutional to ban all gatherings above a certain size just because churches happen to fall into that. That's not religious discrimination because it applies to everyone. Put up a cross in front of the Capitol building. Nothing Trump. Uh, I believe there's nothing Trump could say to stop them at this point. It is more than Trump. It is beyond Trump. But this. This was the main story that I intended to cover. And, and, and let me just read. Pence says he doesn't have the power to reject electoral votes. Vice and he doesn't. His role is ceremonial, especially if you watched it. It's very just, uh, he, it's, it's a lot of repetition and it's basically just certifying the results. They do not have the leeway for him to just decide that he doesn't want to accept those results. That's not how it works. President Pence said on Wednesday, he does not have this power, saying his role is largely ceremonial. In a letter to Congress released as Trump urged him in a speech to take steps to overturn the election, Pence said, it is my considered judgment that my oath to support and defend the Constitution constrains me from claiming unilateral authority to determine which electoral votes should be counted and which should not. Well, that's the, the gist of the story, I suppose. Uh, they may have an update here. They do. Here we go. Trump's ongoing refusal to concede in the race, despite having lost both the popular and electoral vote, has animated much of his base. Despite Republicans calls to dismiss millions of legal votes, Pence wrote that he would keep the oath he made to the American people by upholding the Constitution to the best of his ability. That's that, he said, included ensuring that all formal objections to the certification process were heard. Upon hearing that, it was shortly after that Trump supporters breached the Capitol. I think there may be a reason why there's particular anger among Trump supporters in the Capitol right now. Because they've been incited to violence and whipped up into a frenzy by grifters like you? I'd say it's probably that. The Democrats are projected to be the winners of the, of, uh, the race, the Senate runoff in Georgia, giving them absolute uh, a, a simple majority in the Senate. They'll have the House, the Senate, and the presidency. This allows them to pack the Supreme Court. Yay! And by pack the Supreme Court, they mean adding additional seats to the Supreme Court, which would be great. Please do that. Presumably, Joe Manchin may object and block them on some of these more radical proposals, but it does give them control. Mike Pence then came out and said he won't support the president. And thus, you have very angry Trump supporters. Images have emerged showing the total vote count between Purdue and Ossoff in Georgia. That's the uh, Purdue being the Republican, Ossoff being the Democrat. And just like we saw with Joe Biden around uh, late in the night, we saw that even though Pur here come the conspiracy theories, Purdue was winning with both lines going up. Ossoff just jumped straight up and then it moves forward. Because they count the urban districts last, because they take the longest amount of time, 
urban districts like the district Atlanta is in is coming in last and they're going to vote heavily Democratic. Ford like normal. A strange anomalous jump that pe It's not anomalous. This isn't even new this election cycle. These idiots just decided to point it out this election cycle and claim that it's sus even though it always happens. People don't have an explanation for giving Purdue, I'm sorry, uh, giving Ossoff the victory. And because of things like that, people do not trust these elections. They do not trust the results. And they finally snapped. I was warning about this. I've warned some time about the escalation, and, and, and you're familiar with that. There have been many things I've gotten wrong, and there have been many things I've gotten right. I have no problem saying that I'm not a psychic and I get things wrong. If it's a 50-50, well, then I guess I'm fine, right? But one thing I warned about was that what we saw with George Floyd and the riots uh, across this country was undirected, unorganized, uncontrolled. People were angry. Now, they say they were angry because of George Floyd, but many contended that the, a lot of the anger came from being locked up. <laughs> oh, no. No, they were not locked down protests, you idiot. Having their jobs taken away, becoming desperate and getting no support from Congress. Great. Just undercut the entire point of, of the Black Lives Matter protests by lying about the purpose of them. Good job, Tim. That intensified the riots. But they were rioting against just the police and generally just looting and burning in many places. Trump supporters may not be organized, but they're substantially more focused. When you look at the charts showing the breakdown of the Democrat and Republican Party, you can see Democrats are very spread out, meaning a wide range of leftist to moderate issues. The Republicans are much more centralized. When yeah, they're, they tend to be for far right. Republicans see these lockdowns will persist. With control going to Democrats, there will be years of lockdowns. That's what Bill Gates and Fauci have both said. Before anything goes to normal, it'll be years. Ossoff, Joe Biden's advisor, said six weeks of a national lockdown and mask mandate. You have Trump supporters whose jobs, whose businesses, everything have been stripped away and destroyed by the lockdowns. They blame the government and predominantly the Democrats. Their anger is similar to the lockdown anger we saw from the left, but much more focused and being directed explicitly at Congress and the joint session. I have no idea what to expect from a recess in the joint session. I don't want to give any hard predictions because it would be absurd, but let me just say, part of me thinks the National Guard will come in. These people will be removed. There will be a return to the session of Congress, and then we will see uh, uh, Joe Biden certified. But I thought, I, I thought Mike Pence was going to do it, and I was wrong about that too. It could be that, uh, as Majid Nawaz said, by tomorrow, Wisconsin votes to decertify. That would be insane. What would happen? What would happen now after the Trump supporters breached the building, tear gas fired, members of Congress cracking open uh, tear gas mask bags to mask up? What would happen if Trump actually does end up getting a constitutional victory only because of the Trump supporters? How would that work? How do you think a bunch of people breaking into the Capitol building is going to lead to Wisconsin decertifying its electoral votes? I don't see the A to B there. This is crazy. Maybe I don't wear enough beanies to understand that big brain take. You know, I said the other day that um, what if so many Trump supporters show up, they can't have the joint session. What do we do? Who is president? It would likely fall to Nancy Pelosi as Speaker of the House. That's uh, what many people have predicted. Earlier this morning, I thought I was wrong. The Trump supporters aren't going to show up in large enough numbers nor take any action to shut this down. And I'm glad to say that uh, this time I was actually right. I mean, I, I don't want to pretend like I'm, I'm, I'm all that smart or, you know, all the time. I'm just reading the news, same as most of you. But last night, I really did believe nothing would happen. And I said, but what if? And that what if came true. And he's happy that it happened. Uh, I, won't, I won't lie. Um, in the past year, I've, uh, I've bought many guns. Right now on Twitter, leftists are saying they're going to be buying weapons and training because the Trump people are going crazy. I'm not, su I'm, not, I'm not concerned about any one political faction in terms of my personal safety. I'm concerned about my personal safety in general. Of course, I obviously have more concerns about the left, Antifa, than I do about Trump supporters. You see, they focus on the Capitol building on politics. The left was focused on businesses. My bigger question, though, is leftists were making jokes about guillotines for the elites and the ruling class. Were they serious or are they now going to oppose the Trump supporters 
who are storming the Capitol building. The Trump people aren't storming the Capitol building to, like, try and... How do, how do I put this? Establish some new social order in which it's more egalitarian and that wealthy elites don't get to decide things. They were attempting to overthrow democracy because their fashy daddy didn't win an election. Again, it's not just about actions. It's about the intent and end goal of said actions. <sighs> Isn't this what Antifa wanted? This is what worries me. What happens if- No, Antifa wanted fascists to go away. It's in the name. If it is, and they go in, and then it breaks this country. What happens if we actually are entering some kind of civil war? There it is. Take a shot. Is it all that uh, uh, crazy now? To all the people who said it was silly and absurd to talk about getting emergency food supplies. I'm not even talking about serious prepping. I'm not even talking about building a bunker. I was just saying, look, sometimes it rains, you know, and when it does, you know, the roads close. So you have some food just in case. Maybe don't need it, but, you know, it lasts for 25 years. And they mocked me. They said, where's the civil war, Tim? Where's the chaos? Where's the conflict? This could all end. And I said that before. Remember? Remember when I said this? Maybe the escalation ends here. Maybe it all just goes back to normal. and Everyone smiles and Joe Biden becomes president. But I kind of don't I don't think so. Right now, I'm, I'm sitting here in my room rather freaked out that we just saw Trump supporters shatter the windows of the Capitol building, breach the building, and then the police fired tear gas in the rotunda as they're making their way to the main chamber. I don't know where, at, where, where, where it's all going on right now as I record this video, but my friends, stay safe, stay vigilant, and I'll, I'll stress it one more time. YouTube.com forward slash Timcast IRL live. We'll be live very, very shortly after the publication of this video. I don't, uh, I just don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it ends here. Maybe, maybe by the time I'm done recording, I go back to Twitter and they're like, the Trump supporters have been cleared out. The National Guard has regained control. Joe Biden is president. I believe if that's the case, there will be a crackdown on the internet. There will be a termination of websites like Parler. It will be swift and fierce. My friends, you need to understand that breaching the Capitol is not like someone smashing the window from a, of, a, of a Louis Vuitton and stealing a bag. We are talking about one of the most secure buildings in our country, one of the most important, being breached by American citizens. For better or for worse, the crackdown, I believe, if this gambit fails, will be severe. We will hear from Joe Biden that those who supported Trump, uh, there's going to be truth and reconciliation commissions. They are going to come after a lot of people. I think they'll go after websites like Parler. The, the, the DNS will shut them down, and the Great Reset is underway. <laughs> I don't know what's to come next. I don't. I'm not psychic. Stay safe. Get ready. Something's happening. Thanks for hanging out. YouTube.com slash Timcast IRL, and I will see you later tonight live. YouTube, can we ban Tim Pool yet? Seems like he's, uh, you know... On the side of the terrorists. Just want to point that out. Let me see what, uh... Let me see what these these comments are. We'll sort by newest. <laughs> political violence is never a good thing. But at the same time, the left normalized political violence over the last year. Funny how tunes change the instant the violence is against your cause. The cause being the carrying out of democracy. Funny how that works. Uh, Tim Poole is just as guilty of inciting insurrection as our president. My husband is a huge fan of Mr. Poole. I listen to him daily, but for the first time I am speaking out. No Trump supporter is going to take power. Martial law will not be needed. The thousands of people are cowardly group and are not going to personally suffer for this cause. Did you see them run when the National Guard came? I've never been more proud to be an American when our representatives stood up for us and were not chased from our capital. Thank you, Mitch McConnell, Vice President Pence, Lindsey Graham, and Tim Poole. <laughs> oh, and to Tim Poole, I hear in your voice your glee at this event where four Trump supporters and most likely your listeners died. I can only hope that your listeners understand that you are happy these people are dead. May God speak to your heart and drive all evil out of it. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Some of this is on you, Timmy. <laughs> I'm shocked. Why, Tim? You're responsible for these cockroaches. 
Tim has been gleefully predicting and justifying a civil war. Hmm. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Tim Pool's such trash. I hate him. Anyway, enough of Tim Pool being wrong.